Assembling a miniature by the rules isn't very chaotic or very interesting to watch, in my opinion. So I put together this Doretio Dreadnought off camera. This is gonna be part of my Nurgle army. I pose the legs in a more crouched position. I've seen a lot of people stand them straight up, which makes them look really top heavy, like about to fall over top heavy. Though I do need to try to move away from just positioning one leg higher than the other and then calling that a dynamic pose. The vents on the missile launcher are pretty beat up, but I think it adds character. The one bit of kit bashing I did was a head swap. I took it from this Spellcrow Dark Mace and Prince Head Pack. I'll probably use the mace for either a Plague Bearer or Poxwalker in a future video. I had to taper the back of the head to fit, just like in previous conversions, but I don't think you really notice it at all. And to add some Nurgle iconography, I glued on this bit from the Putrid Blight Kings kit. I had this primed and ready for paint, but there was one issue that just kept bugging me. The icon and the helmet are both pitted and presumably like rusted out looking, while the dreadnought body is blemish free. I knew I had to find a way to try to fix that. I looked at more putrid Blight Kings parts to try to mimic the pitting on the weapons, but I was worried I was going to completely destroy the Dreadnought, so I shelved it for a few months. Eventually I just said screw it, embrace the chaos, and JUST DO IT! I started with, I think it's called a burring bit, with my rotary tool. I targeted flat areas mostly, but also hit a few isolated areas lightly to more evenly distribute the decay. I also used two drill bits of different sizes. They were the smallest ones that I could find. I varied between shallow and deep pits, drawing inspiration from those Blight Kings parts. I swap between the three rotary tool bits pretty often to make the pitting look more random. I know that this would be very easy to overdo, but I think it exercised the right amount of restraint with the distressing. I'll finish this up and then lay down some base colors off camera. I don't want my Nurgle army to be a complete wall of green, so I added a few bits of white armor to make this dreadnought stand out. Kind of felt like I was painting the away game colors. I'm not a lore lizard, like at all, but I did a bit of reading and it made sense, at least to me, to have a more heresy era paint job on a heresy era dread, I think. But this is still a Nurgle dreadnought, so it's only going to be sort of white armor. I'm using an assortment of all the brown washes I own to dirty it up. I did end up overdoing the washes and had to go back over everything with a super thin down white to dull the weathering down and then went over all of that with another light brown wash to tie it all back together. This model obviously needs some nurglings, so I modified one from the Great Unclean One kit. The sensor, or thurible, I had to look those terms up by the way, was removed because it makes the model, at least in my opinion, look too busy. And I also had an absolute headache trying to paint non-traditional flames on a yet to be released project, so that's why I cut those off there. I also painted up two additional nurglings to have hitching a ride on this thing. I don't want this to turn into a painting channel, so uh, after this footage of applying washes, I'll just cut to the finished product. I paid a lot more attention to the paint job this time around, and I'm actually pretty satisfied with it. 
I'm contemplating going back and adding the pitting and rust to my previous Nurgle Dreadnought. I think that might make it better, or at least improve my opinion on it. Not sure. I also tried a different style of Plasma Glow, and I will definitely be switching to this Blue Glow going forward. Well, look at the time. If you dug this conversion, standing shooting star press the like button and pop off in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will catch you later.